Welcome to the last of this four-part series on using metal nibs with pen tablets. This experiment started back in July of 2022, and now over six months later, it's time to end the experiment and talk about the results. This is what the metal nib looks like after six months of daily usage. It's still perfectly smooth and looks completely unused. You may notice there has been a little bit of plastic that is missing from the tip of the pen. This is a pen I purchased a few years ago, so I think this plastic has been missing for quite a while and is not due to the metal nib at all. You can see it was in one of my earlier photos of the pen and it's only visible through the microscope. This is what my tablet looks like now after six months of usage with the metal nib. I would call this completely undamaged, but we'll go deep into what happened to the surface. I'm gonna show you some pictures of the surface of the pen tablet. Here's what the surface looks like under a microscope. And in this photo, you're seeing an image that's covering about five and a half millimeters across and three millimeters tall. The surface texture is clearly visible. One of the first things we'll observe when using any kind of pen on a surface that has texture is that the texture is eroded. This will happen with plastic nibs and metal nibs, and it will happen more if you're pressing down harder. The erosion of this texture is permanent, but it is benign because you can't feel it with your hand or fingernail or with the pen, and it will not deflect the movement of the pen, so it does not damage your drawing experience. I used a plastic nib and went back and forth multiple times as if I was shading, and then I cleaned the tablet, and this is what the surface texture looks like. You can see streaks where the texture has been eroded. I did the same thing with the metal nib, and even though you can't see the streaks like in the plastic nib photo, you can see the texture has been worn down. This is a picture of the same model of tablet with six months of usage from a plastic nib. In the middle, you can see an area where there's lots of texture wear, and it looks kind of shiny and smooth. Again, even with this much wear, it does not affect the drawing experience at all. And even though it's quite visible in this photo, I have to set up the lighting just right so that it shows up in the photo. If I'm looking at the tablet from my normal drawing position, I don't see this glossy effect. Now let's take a look at the tablet with six months of metal nib usage. And again, you don't see any of those shiny spots and I move the lights around and there's nothing like that worn surface texture area. If you look closely, you will see some marks toward the left side. I examined these with a microscope and these are the erosion of the surface texture. My belief is that these marks are probably not caused by the metal nib because I don't draw in that region. And that very large streak could not have been created with the metal nib at all. The metal nib just does not produce anything that wide. I think what happened here is that I put something on the surface of my tablet and that caused these marks. And again, they're clearly visible in this photo, but I had to get the lighting and the angle just right to make it visible. If I was sitting in front of the tablet, I would not see these. Toward the middle of the tablet, there are a few marks showing some texture erosion. Under a microscope, these marks are very tiny, only about one-tenth of a millimeter in width. And they haven't removed all the texture, a good amount of it still remains. And again, these are not easily visible, and they certainly cannot be felt or affect the pen in any way. Scratches are another thing we might observe in the surface of a pen tablet. It's a little unclear what causes them. The general thinking about these scratches is, when they come from a pen, it's with a plastic nib where you've created an edge because you've worn away so much of the plastic. These scratches are permanent, of course, and they do vary quite a bit in size. Very small scratches are undetectable and almost invisible, and they don't affect your drawing experience. However, if they get large enough, you can certainly see them and feel them with your hand or fingernail and through the pen tip, and some of them are large enough to even deflect the tip of the pen as the pen moves over the scratch, and that will interfere with your drawing experience. This is a photo of some scratches from a different tablet where I was using a plastic nib. And you can see again the wide variation in the thickness of these scratches. This is another photo of another tablet where I was using a plastic nib for six months. And in the center where I'm drawing, you can see lots of tiny scratches. And some of these scratches are extremely small. Here's a picture of them. And I know you can't see them very easily, so I'm going to add some red boxes to highlight their positions. And you can see how faint they truly are. And again, these scratches came on a tablet with a plastic nib. If we look at the surface of the tablet I tested with a metal nib for six months, there are no such scratches. And I examined the surface with a microscope to find them, and I could not. The original purpose of this experiment was to talk about damage to the surface, 
but so many people who watched my earlier videos wanted me to explore other things that might happen with a metal nib. Let's start with hover height. And when I say hover height, what I mean is this. As I take the pen and get closer and closer to the tablet, what is the first height at which the tablet detects the pen? This tablet is known to have a 10 millimeter hover height. In my testing with the Wacom driver and this tablet, both the plastic nib and the metal nib were detected and work at 10 millimeters. Now, one thing you may not be aware of is that this 10 millimeter distance does not come from the hardware. It is actually a limitation enforced by the driver. The tablet hardware can sense the pens at a much greater distance. The way to test that is to use a different driver. So I used open tablet driver. Open tablet driver does not by default have any limit on the hover height. What I found there was both the plastic nib and the metal nib let the pen be detected at around 20 millimeters. So overall, I can conclude in this case for this tablet, the metal nib had no impact on hover height. Now let's talk about the accuracy of the pen. In summary, I found no changes to accuracy. The general pen tracking accuracy is the same. The center versus corner accuracy is the same. The cursor lag is the same. And the diagonal wobble is the same. I did not specifically test tilt, but as I drew, I did not notice any specific change. Where I did notice some change was the pressure range. Wacom pens are known to support a very wide pressure range compared to competitors. I found a spreadsheet from a fellow tablet enthusiast named Cube. And in that spreadsheet, he has numbers that he measured from various Wacom pens. As you can see with the Wacom Pro Pen 2, model number KP504E, with a plastic nib, there is a tremendous pressure range from less than one gram force to almost 800 gram force. Again, this is a fantastically wide pressure range. And the numbers here are with a plastic nib. One thing I really have to clarify about the numbers you're seeing for the amount of pressure is that these force values are estimates. And even if you tested multiple pens of the same model number, you will see some variation in the results. So keep that in mind. But overall, in my experience with the Wacom Pro Pen 2, I think these are very reasonable numbers. Now keep in mind, I have no equipment to measure the pressure, but here is what I noticed and what I will show you. The metal nib seemed to have no impact on the upper bound of the pressure range. The metal nib did increase the lower bound of the pressure range. And that lower bound is the initial activation force. I don't have a specific number I can tell you about, but I made a little simple demonstration to show you what the effect would be. I simply attached a pen to a string, and then I hold the pen on the tablet with the string and drag the pen across. With this setup, only the pen's weight is accounting for the pressure. And what I tried to do, which is very difficult drawing with the string this way, is to draw, roughly speaking, a rectangle starting at the upper left-hand corner. Now remember, if something gets drawn here, it's not going to be a perfect rectangle, and that's not the problem. What we're looking for is a continuous stroke. This was the result with a plastic nib. I know you're seeing gaps here, but that's not the pen of the nib's fault, that's my fault. What happened is I was unsteady with my hand, and I suddenly jerked the pen, and so that's explaining those areas of discontinuity in the stroke. So really the point of this diagram is, you can draw a continuous line just with the weight of that pen. I tried repeating the same thing with a metal nib and got a different result. You cannot draw a continuous line that way. You're noticing that most of these marks are small dashes or even little dots. What's causing those is the way I move my hand and the pen kind of has some extra pressure where it lands at different spots on the tablet. So at those points, there's a little extra pressure and those shows up as these dots or these little dashes. And you see some longer marks at the bottom of this picture. This was another case where I was unsteady with my hand and I actually moved the pen in a very jerky way backwards and that caused more pressure than normal. And that's why you see those longer strokes. So overall, it's pretty clear that the lower bound of the pressure range is affected by metal nib. So with the plastic nib, you will be able to sense more pressure at the lower bound. This really did not bother me. I don't really rely on very 
tiny amounts of pressure, but I know it will be an issue for some people. The final thing I evaluated was whether a metal nib would damage the pen itself. In one of my previous videos, I revealed that I found a Reddit user who was using a metal nib and just from dropping his pen onto a carpeted floor, broke three pens in a row that way. And the part that broke was the ferrite rod sitting inside the inductor coil. Now, it's not as if every drop of the pen with the metal nib broke those pens, but certainly they eventually did break and he switched back to plastic nibs and hasn't experienced this breaking since then. And I want to say again, I did contact this user and verify that a metal nib was involved in these cases. Given this information and given the fact that, you know, Wacom pens are very expensive, I felt I had to test whether the metal nib would damage my pen. So I conducted a drop test. I dropped the pen from a distance of 28 inches, about 0.7 meters, onto a hardwood floor. And I dropped it in such a way that the tip of the pen hits the floor. I dropped it 10 times this way. And after every time I dropped it, I tested the pen. After the 10th drop, I stopped. And I detected no change whatsoever. The pen was still accurate. It still supported the same pressure range and nothing changed about its accuracy or lag or tilt, etc. I also did not hear anything rattle around inside the pen. So it seems like nothing was physically broken inside. But to be fair, I did not open the pen to carefully examine the components inside. Some of you are wondering why 28 inches, that is a normal height for a desk. So essentially I was trying to simulate someone knocking the pen off the desk. Now I said I did 10 drops, actually I did 14, but four of those times, it was not clear whether the tip hit the floor or not. So I am ignoring those drops. So you can see we have two very different results with one person having dropped their pen and it breaks very easily. And the other person, me, dropping my pen many times and it doesn't seem to break as easily. So it's unclear how to immediately resolve this discrepancy. One thing we should highlight though, is that there are different pens involved. In the Reddit thread, that user were using the KP501 pen, which is the grip pen. But I am using the KP504 pen, which is the Pro Pen 2. And so maybe the internal hardware is different and that might contribute to the different results. Another factor is that the nib shapes are very different. So maybe the difference in nib size also plays a part in these different results. Now let me summarize where we landed with this experiment. First, as to the question of whether a metal nib will damage the surface of a pen tablet, based on my experience, the answer is no. A metal nib will not damage the pen tablet surface compared to a plastic nib. Both plastic and metal nibs can erode some of the surface texture, which is normal for a pen tablet, and that does not affect the drawing experience. And so I do not classify that as damage. In my usage over six months, I did not see that the metal nib created any scratches on the surface. I even tried deliberately creating scratches with the metal nib and failed to do so. There is a little bit of mystery about how plastic nibs can create scratches on the tablet surface. I have many tablets that show scratching toward the center where I draw, but it is unclear how the plastic nib caused that damage. One theory says that as plastic nibs wear, they create an edge and that edge is sh kind of sharp. And as you draw, it can create a scratch in the plastic of the tablet surface. Now, I actually tried that, deliberately creating a scratch with a flattened plastic nib, and I couldn't. Maybe it's because I wasn't pressing hard enough or I didn't make the edge sharp enough, I don't know. Again, I do believe that plastic nibs do cause scratching. I have enough tablets that attest to that, but the mechanism is not clear. But at the very least, I can say, metal nibs don't seem to cause scratches. When I started this series, I said, I am not a tablet scientist. So I have to admit, this was not the most rigorous of experiments or scientifically correct. And so I'm going to call out all the ways in which I could be wrong here. And my results and conclusions may not generalize. First, remember, I tend not to draw with a very heavy hand. So I don't go to the upper end of a pressure range. So damage that comes from high pressure was not something I really explored. Second, I do own a lot of Wacom Intuos Pro tablets. And I can tell you, there is a wide variation in how they are affected by plastic nibs. Some of my tablets are kind of scratched up and some are not. 
Some show a lot of texture erosion and others do not. And in my many years of using a plastic nib, I have never created scratches that were deep enough that they interfered with my drawing experience. In other words, never did I see a scratch which deflected the tip of the pen. Third, keep in mind, I am testing a very specific tablet, which is the Wacom Intuos Pro Large, model number PTH860. As Wacom tablets go, this series of Intuos Pro tablets is known to have a lot of texture compared to previous models. So it's possible that when I show you pictures of texture erosion, it's just more common in this tablet than other tablets and tablets from other manufacturers. Fourth, remember, I was doing mostly line art with the occasional shading of areas where I take the pen back and forth many times. So the patterns of wear that I saw are relative to what I was doing with it. You may be doing artwork in a very different way and you might get a very different effect. The next question is, does using a metal nib affect the drawing experience in any way? Overall, my conclusion is the metal nib did not affect the overall drawing experience, except it did change the lower bound of the pressure range. And I know of one other person who does use a metal nib and noticed the same thing with their pen. So I think this is truly a phenomenon that does happen with metal nibs. Despite this change in pressure on the lower bound, the initial activation force, I still had a fantastic experience drawing. Personally, I am not that sensitive to the initial activation force like some others are. I know some of you really like drawing with very light strokes, so you may want to take that into consideration if you are thinking about getting a metal nib. Is a metal nib likely to break your pen in some way? I mentioned I took a serious effort at trying to damage my pen by dropping it, and I could not get the pen to break. However, we have to take into account we do have some evidence that a pen will break with a metal nib. Another interesting thing I discovered is that Wacom ink pens actually do have a metal nib. So that's another piece of evidence that says it is at least plausible that a metal nib is okay to use with an EMR pen. So I would call this somewhat inconclusive overall, but for my usage, I am comfortable using a metal nib with my pen and I'm no longer scared that I might break it from a fall. Do I recommend using a metal nib? My official position is no. I do not recommend using a metal nib. I really cannot recommend using a metal nib. And the reason is that because I am trying to give advice that will overall help the most amount of people. Manufacturers explicitly say that you should not use a metal nib with their pens and their tablets. So in good conscience, I cannot recommend people use a metal nib because it would mean that they will lose support from their manufacturer and maybe take their equipment out of warranty. Second, some of you are very dependent on that extremely low pressure range, the initial activation force. And you saw that with a metal nib, it will affect that experience. So that was my official position. But if you ask me, will I continue to use a metal nib? Yes, I absolutely will. I had a great time drawing with my metal nib. After six months of using it, I'm very confident with it. I don't think I'm gonna break the pen. I like the drawing experience. I love the fact that the surface of the pen tablet is experiencing very little wear and no scratches. And yes, the pressure range on the lower bound, the initial activation force, is not as good as with the plastic nib, but that doesn't affect my art. So I am personally going to continue using my metal nib. This ends my experiment with metal nibs. I've received so much help from people with comments and questions and suggestions. So thank you all. I think of this as an experiment that we did together. Thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoyed this video.